Hi, I'm Dan, and I hope you've had a nice Christmas time. And as one bonus treat coming in at the end of the year, we have Booksack 23.12. So in this video, I'm going to go over all the latest features in this new release. So there's a couple of upgrade notices for this release, one of which is that the prior release, Booksack 23.10, did have a security release within its patch versions. So you can read our blog post here if you wanted more details on that particular issue. Upgrade will strongly advise where you have untrusted page editors within your instance. And then our other notice is in regards to page includes. So if you're using page include tags, just be aware that the system behind the scenes for managing these page includes, this system has changed quite significantly, and this can sometimes affect in edge cases how content may be displayed if you're using page includes. So the first thing I want to show you for this release is the new description WYSIWYG input. So descriptions are used across books, chapters, and shelves within Bookstack, and they've always previously been just simple plain text input boxes. But now we've got this simpler WYSIWYG interface. So it's not a full-on WYSIWYG interface like our page editor, but it's a cut down one just to allow some simple, sensible formatting within these description boxes. So you can see here for my cat adoption profiles book, I've got a bit of content in here and some of this is italicized and some of this is bolded and I've also got a link in here. Upon those formatting options, you've also got a couple of list types, so bullet lists and numbered lists if you need to use those as well. So if we save this, we'll then see that within our book description here. So this just allows you to add a little bit extra formatting as well as the use of links to, you know, maybe link to some extra context specific for that book at a book level rather than having to detail stuff in a page. And since now links can be part of descriptions for these items, the references system within Booksack has been updated. So if I jump over to a page here, this is referenced by four items. If I click on those four items, you can see this is referenced by a chapter, a book, a shelf and a page now. Whereas previously, you'd only really see pages in here because those are the only things that could have links to other items in the system. And of course, the other benefits of references are built into this as well. So that if I was to rename this page in a way that makes the URL change, the URL within those descriptions would also be updated to automatically adapt to that change within the system. And to work with this change, the API has also been updated. So if we look at the endpoint for creating a book, for example, seeing the body parameters is now a description HTML option as well as the alt description option. So there shouldn't be any breaking changes here because the old methods were supported, but you can now provide HTML as part of that description as shown in our example here. Although note what Bookstack would accept is purposely limited to align with what's available in the WYSIWYG interface within Bookstack itself. Next up is the ability to set default page templates within a book. So again, looking at my cat adoption profiles book here, I've got a template within here just to set out a template for what I might want for an adoption profile for a cat. And in my use, I'll probably want every new page within here to follow that template. And within the current usage of templates, I would have to create a new page and then open up templates in the sidebar and then select that template to get that into the editor. But that process takes a few steps and could easily be missed, especially if someone's not familiar with the templating system within the book stack. So instead of that, in this release, we have a new option when we're editing or creating a book. So if I edit this book, we can see a new part here, default page template. If I open that up, this allows me to select an existing template in the system. And then this will be used by default on all new pages that are created within this book. So if I save this, and now if I create a new page, I can see this template has been loaded up automatically without me having to go in and select it. And a shout out to Leonard Daniels here for starting the work to get this into Bookstack. Now onto a new feature for OpenID Connect users. So this version of Bookstack brings OIDC RP initiator logout. So this is a system that allows the logout to be integrated with your authentication system over OIDC. And this is an official complementary part of the OIDC spec that was more recently added. Now from my testing, this seems to be very well supported across many authentication providers that I've tested this against, but this is not enabled by default because it's quite likely you'll need to configure something on your OpenID Connect system. But as an example, if I jump over into my test instance, here I am logged in as a user via OpenID Connect, and here's my Otka dashboard, which is my authentication system that I'm using. So you can see here that I'm currently logged in. And now if I choose to log out of Bookstack, so in the background of that process, it would also contact Otka. So if I go back to my dashboard here and now refresh, I can now see that it's logged me out because it logged me out out of Otka at the same time as Bookstack. So thanks to this user on GitHub for getting the implementation started to add this RP initiated logout into Bookstack. So now on to notifications. So we added notifications a few releases ago, and what we're seeing here is a page comment notification advising us that a user has added a comment to a page that we're watching. But something that we've added in this release is this page path element. 
So previously we'd show the page name with a link. There's no change in that regard. But quite often a page name might not tell enough by itself since that page name could be reused in multiple locations or it might be missing a lot of context without knowing the chapter and or book that it's within. So now this page path is shown, which in this case reflects the book and the chapter that that page exists within. If the page was just within a book, then you'd only see this first part. They're just a small addition that really can help provide some extra context with these notifications. So shout out to Man in Black here for coming up with this idea and contributing some code to get this into Bookstack. And now for a minor, although somewhat significant design change, which is two buttons just to make them fit into the UI a little bit better. Specifically, they're slightly more rounded and the text is not uppercase, so they're not a shouty and they have slightly nicer shadows. So if I go over to my release post here, you can see a much better comparison over the changes made. So again, a pretty minor thing, but just an example of the slow evolution of design that I like to kind of continuously achieve upon each release. And now onto some changes to the logical theme system. So I've added a couple of extra theme events in this release. One of them is the roots register web and then the roots register web auth. So this top one allows you to easily register new URL endpoints and actions for those endpoints. And the second one is much the same, but specifically for an authenticated context. For example, when you're logged into Bookstack or when public access is enabled. So this kind of thing was possible before, but you had to really know some of the internals of Bookstack and rely on some things that weren't considered stable as well. So this is a case of just making that ability a bit more official and, and making such customizations a little bit easier to access. And now on to changes to the page include system. So this is the system in Bookstack that allows us to include content from other pages, either the entire contents of a page or select sections via the use of tags like these. So for example, if I save this page with just this content, is bringing in content from another page in the system. So really the changes for this release are all in the background, but they're quite significant. So the old system was quite simple. We'd basically do like a find and replace for this content, but that meant it wasn't very content aware and it could create invalid HTML that would then have unreliable effects within the browser, uh, primarily through things like extra spacing that you can get rid of. But now the system has been built to be a lot smarter and aware of the structure of the page. And although it won't be perfect because HTML as a format is quite complex when you get into the details of things, but now it should be a lot more reliable and it has the ability to avoid the kind of issues that it would face before. And now on to languages and translations, this release adds a finish. So as we can see here in my profile, I've selected finish and everything's all updated to be in that language. So a big thanks to this user on Crowdin for putting in the work to provide this translation for Bookstack. And of course, a massive thanks to everyone else that have provided translations to Bookstack since the last feature release. Again, the amount of effort contributed is absolutely incredible. We're often seeing contributions in the thousands of words per release. But no matter how many words are being contributed, it's all in the benefit of making the platform better for people that rely on these languages. So thank you very much to everyone here. But that about covers all the significant features that I want to go over in this release. In terms of next steps, now that we've got the new WYSIWYG editor, the simple version that we're using for descriptions, I also had that in mind for comments so that you'd be able to use the same formatting controls when it comes to writing comments, which will then also help when it comes to other features like being able to mention other people within comments to then alert them via notifications and things like that. So I'd like to roll out that WYSIWYG to those, although with comments, they already you do support markdown although this probably isn't used by many people because we don't really advertise it but it does mean a backwards incompatible change and then in the next few days i'm going to be doing like a, another blog post about bookstack in 2023 i've been think, doing these for a couple of years and this will basically include like a list of what we've achieved in the last year as well as a status update on the project and funding as well because while i haven't added up all my costs and income so far it looks like I might have covered my living costs for this year, which will be a great achievement. And lastly, going into the next year, I'd like to explore some of the new PHP ecosystem technologies, specifically ones like Roadrunner and Franken PHP, which are technologies that run PHP applications in a slightly different way. So yeah, it's on my plan to explore those to see what benefits they can bring to Bookstack. But that's just about everything covered. So I hope you enjoy all the new features of this release and I wish you a very smooth upgrade. Again, happy Christmas if you celebrate it and I wish everyone a wonderful new year.